What up, what up? Welcome back to Me Versus Me. My name is Shayna. My name is Maker. And our purpose is to ignite passion, passion purpose, purpose, and intentional living by redefining past and present circumstances as, as catalysts, catalysts for, for an extraordinary, extraordinary future. future. This episode is called Untrue Colors. It's about relationships, and more specifically, it's about that weird thing that happens. You could be on cloud nine. <laughs> If I met somebody, I'm in love, oh my God, now you're dating, you're on cloud nine, and then, oh my God, he proposed, and then, so you're on cloud nine, you get married, everything's great, y'all go on the honeymoon, and all of a sudden, boom, you wake up, and you're an asshole. We figured out why. We got it. We're diving into it. Stick around. I've been my fears now. I've been moving faithfully. They've been trying to come for me. They've been trying to take from me. If I ever happen to fall, but I do that gracefully. Take my losses gratefully, cause I know they gon' strengthen me. Ain't no breaking me. Ain't no thing to see. They just ain't the same as me. They spend every day, they breathe and make believe. Trying to make it seem like they major league. But that's Maybelline. I just say my peace, then retreat. Cause I know I can't change a thing but me. Say la vie. Say la vie. The human brain has one primary function, survival. It's designed to keep us alive. That's why, if you've ever seen a little baby, before they even have the strength or the knowledge of holding their head up, if you lay them down, they're looking around the room, they're trying to figure out how the world works. They're scanning their environment, and if the key is survival, they're looking around to see if there's any potential threats, anything that could ultimately kill them. That's how human beings are wired, and that's what our brain's purpose is, primarily. As we get older, kids start asking a million and one questions, and the purpose of that is not to drive the parents crazy. It's because there's something new, and they're intrigued, but more than that, they need to find out whether this thing is a threat or not. They need to understand it. They need to know what it's all about. As we get older, somewhere along the way, we stop asking questions, and whether our parents tell us, stop asking questions, or we're embarrassed, or whatever it may be. We stop asking questions. Our curiosity kind of gets muffled. But our brain is still doing its job. So if we go somewhere, we're hanging out with somebody, and there's something foreign, it's constantly scanning, and it goes, okay, what is this thing all about? That's why you find yourself kind of getting drawn to that foreign thing. You see a little kid at a restaurant, and you're wearing crazy clothes, he or she is going to stare at you with no no remorse, no unapologetically. Need to find out what's a threat and what's not. What your brain does is once it gathers data, it starts to create neuro associations. Imagine a filing, like a room with a bunch of filing cabinets. And let's say you just heard the word jump for the first time. Well, now it takes the word jump, writes it down on a piece of paper, sticks it on a filing cabinet. Anything that comes in association with the word jump, or even if you say jump and lay down, jump, lay down, jump, and then the person lays down, your brain's going to take all this data and file it away. And then when you're 17 years old or 25 years old or 50 years old, if you haven't figured out what jump means, somebody says jump, you're going to lay down. This filing cabinet gets open and all this data comes running to the front. Because this is how I need to act in the face of this environment so I can survive. You can't be tense in a loving setting, and you can't be lax in a fight. You'll die. So your brain's scanning body language, posture, tone of voice, emotion, outcome, everything. And is compiling it. And that's why your environment shapes who you are. Your environment shapes your reality. Something called the law of averages. You become the average of the five people you spend the most time with. That's because you see their actions, your brain sees their actions, processes more than you're consciously aware of, and it creates your reality. That also happens in marriage. That's why you wake up one morning and boom, you're an asshole, like we said. And we don't mean that literally might be the case, but oftentimes we start acting crazy. We start acting out of our norm. And we show our untrue colors. So, like, what do you specifically mean when you say environment? Like, what, what are other things are you talking about? So, like, with, I mean, in relation to marriage, like, it's your environment 
what you're around, but you have a physical environment where your body is, but you also have a mental environment, an emotional environment, like, especially in this day and age, it could be your parents, it could be family, friends, kind of an extended circle, could be, you could have a teacher that's talking badly about her husband, or sense. teacher talking badly about his wife. All these things, anything related to marriage, you have movies, books, music, magazines, pictures, like you name it, it's there. Like you could go on Twitter and see a thread about marriage or Reddit or Facebook. Anything that pertains to the word marriage or husband or wife or matrimony, like whatever it may be, it clumps it together. Your brain goes, okay, marriage, marriage, marriage. Oh, what's a husband? And then it starts looking, what's a husband? Oh, a, mu- a husband is the man in the marriage. Okay, what's a wife? Oh, okay. So husband, wife, marriage, matrimony. was, it? And it just creates this clump. And it influences your perception of what marriage is. That's why people get cold feet before they get married because they're terrified. Their brain's like, whoa, whoa, whoa what are you doing? Marriage is no fun. Marriage is no fun. Do you want to talk badly about this person that you love? No? Don't get married. That makes so much sense. I remember, because we had this conversation specifically when we were dating, or when after we were engaged, we were like, oh my gosh, there's like so many negative connotations to marriage and getting married, and even some people were like, are y'all sure? Mm-hmm. Like, are you sure you want to do this thing? Whatever. I remember we had the conversation that, oh my gosh, like, we're not going to be like that. Because there's, of course, there's with our generation or our parents' generation, there's gender roles and the women do this and the men do this and the women don't work, the men work and X, Y, Z. And we're like, listen, we're both going to work. We're both going to clean the house. It's 50-50 mm-hmm. or it's 100-100. Like there's no, everything's equal. And I would say that about six months maybe, not yeah. even because our mar- the way we got married and we lived with your parents and then we got a house and things were just weird for us. But It didn't last very long Mm -hmm. at all, and things change like this. And I remember sometimes I would hang out, like, our group of friends isn't really married, but, like, sometimes I would hang out with an older group of friends who were all married, and that was just a common theme. Or, like, if I went to school, it was just whenever you're with girls or you're with somebody who's either living with the person or married to the person. I think even living with the person is just different, but we would just completely talk a bunch of shit. Yeah. And I'm not happy about this. He does this. He does this. I remember I'd call my mom and just complain about all the things that you would do. And I was just unhappy. Like, I just associated marriage with all this other shit versus associating marriage with an increase of love and abundance of joy and all these other things. Yeah. And that's what's crazy. Like, marriage could be that. Marriage could be this. Right? Like, it was years that. I mean, I, th- I think it, what it's been maybe the past year, really, that our marriage is like, we're happy. Yeah. Right? Like, we loved each other so much. That, I mean, we always have. But the love got masked because of all the other crap. It wasn't until the past year that love came back to the forefront and we started being more compassionate and empathetic towards each other and supporting each other in that, like, in all aspects. Right. All shades of you, right? Yeah. Like started respecting each other in different different ways and it's funny how like we get into environments like even when we're in good places Mm -hmm. we would have micro moments before that we would be in a good place and then you'd go hang out with people and you'll come back and we're no longer in a good place and I was so confused like what just happened like what what I do like I sat at home and ate Lopez like and it's because you go there and somebody talks badly about their husband and then well, another person plays off of it and your brain goes, look, I told you. Well, it's not only that. Like, we weren't in a good place either. So yeah. I was just using it as my outlet. That's true. So if I'd go hang out with my girl, I'd be like, all right, this is my time away from him. Yeah. And I get to just be and say whatever I want and do whatever I want without it being a fight. Yeah. So it's not just because of somebody else. We just weren't in a good place either. Well, I'm saying that it's, it's because of us because of somebody else. Like, we create this, like, okay, I think, like, we're on the road to getting better. We could potentially, okay. I'm not as anxious. I'm not as mad. I'm not as annoyed or upset as I normally am. It's a trigger hanging out with people. That's what I mean. Yeah. And then we go, and then all of a sudden, somebody says, oh, my God, me too. And then uncontrollably, 
we start talking negatively and then we drive home we're like ah and we come home in that with that energy right and then it just spirals back out and it's that's i'm thank god that we're not there anymore yeah um, Never going back? No, <laughs> at all, right? Like, so we're in the best place we've ever been in in our relationship. And there may be micro moments here or there. Literally, we move through them so fast now. But, like, micro moments that something gets brought up and it's a trigger and it, we start acting out of character again. Luckily, we have the understanding and the experience, if you will. And we've dedicated so much time to fixing our relationship that we, right. we see it we can move through it. But, like, why do you think that it gets triggered i think the biggest thing is that fear starts driving the train so when we start let's say like before before we get married we are our true selves and when we're talking about being um in a good place and we are not going to be like everybody else that we see around us like growing up we have this perception of what marriage is and then when we get together, we're like, okay, we're not going to do it like that because that doesn't seem right. Mm-hmm. That doesn't seem like how we want to live our lives, right? So then we are our true selves and we show our true colors to each other. And then when we get married, something happens. And that something that happens, I believe, is fear. Mm-hmm. Fear starts driving the sense. train. Fear starts taking over every part of your body. Like, I'm going to lose this person or this person doesn't love me anymore or I'm not good enough. All those negative, terrible beliefs that you have start driving the train Mm -hmm. and then you cause it to happen. Yeah. So then you start causing the fights. I remember, I remember like unintentionally picking some of the fights Mm -hmm. intentionally, but unintentionally. Like I didn't want to, but like I couldn't help it. Like something just took over me and I would just... Go. I knew the next thing I would say, if I said it, it would cause a problem, I would still say it. Mm-hmm. And it was just the fear. But I didn't realize that the fear is what was causing it to also continue to happen. Yeah. And it was just like expectations. And if you don't do something my way, then you don't love me. And that's just not how it is. No. And so it's interesting that you say it like that. But what, like... Flipping that fear, right? So fear and the purpose of your brain, right? To keep you alive. You have fear because you don't want to die. Yeah. As irrational as it may be, it doesn't matter. Your brain doesn't know any better. It's life or death. Very black and white. And if you're afraid of something, you don't want to die. So you have to fight it. You have to combat it and you have to change it. You have to... You have to beat it. Yeah. And, I mean, human, like, we didn't have these type of lifestyles when humans evolved or mm-hmm. were created or whatever you believe, right? Like, we didn't have this kind of life. It was literally, you may have a saber-toothed tiger trying to kill you. So that fear, you had to fight or flight. Now it's irrational in our environments that we live in now, for the most part, at least here in America. And so... If you have a fear of something, you meet fire with fire, mm-hmm. right? And it starts to like, you create this, it's like a weird dynamic where you create this codependency on this person that you're with and you say, okay, if you're acting towards me this way, or if you're acting in any way that I don't approve of or I don't agree with, I'm going to die. They may do something that scares you, but they didn't do it to you. But just because it scares you, the fear comes running back to the forefront, drives how you react, and then all of a sudden now you have an environment that is hostile, but you're okay with it because the definition you have of marriage is supported by that. So you're saying, I'm not putting myself into an uncertain environment or something that's foreign. I'm actually just validating this claim. Right. So I'm okay fighting with the person I love. I'm okay with having a hostile household because that's marriage. Yeah. It is what it is. Yeah. Right? So it's so crazy. So like changing the definition of what marriage is for you is such a difficult thing to do. And like, I remember like a year, I don't know, we were still in the house at this point, but we had gone to marriage counseling. I think we did a our first session of two of the two sessions we did and we were starting to shift in a better place we had a bunch of aha moments and 
there was this Rap Radar interview with Will Smith. And they're asking him a bunch of questions about music and this, that, and then they, say, they ask him about his marriage. And he starts talking about him and Jada. And he said, we've had, our, you know, we've had our fair share. We've been on the verge of divorce multiple times. And we're just in a bad place. And ultimately it hit us one day that marriage is not dependent meets dependent. Marriage is a dance. Marriage is two people that love each other who are on their own journeys. Oh, yeah. Marriage is, betwe- marriage is between two people who are on their own journeys in life. And they love each other so much that they want to be, they want to do their own journeys with, within each other's presence. And there's that type of energy that you guys are feeding each other with, the compassion, the love, the empathy, the support, the encouragement, the accountability mm-hmm. that allows you to thrive and live to your full potential on your journey. So the next example, I mean, the example he gave is kind of, it's, it's, a, it's like, it's planting, right? So you have soil and you have a flower. So you go to the grocery store and you buy a pack of, like a seed, seeds of flowers, whatever kind of flower. You need soil. Now, if you go to the store and you buy soil and you put it in a, like a vase or a, what, a pot, mm-hmm. you put soil in a pot and you just let it sit there. What good is it doing? You're wasting the soil. The soil needs seeds. So it can pass through nutrients to the seed and allow it to grow. And the seed needs the soil to feel worthy, feel adequate, to feel like it is fulfilling its purpose. Right. But neither one of them is doing the same thing. Right. They're just in each other's presence. They're living out their own journeys and they're sharing energy. The flower's blossoming as a result of the love that it's getting from the soil and vice versa. That is so insane. Dang, I forgot about that. That just hit me on a whole new level being in the place that we are now because I remember looking back and I had just thought I was so awesome for supporting you quitting your job and that was the end of my journey. That's what I thought, that me just supporting you and letting you not work and letting you do whatever you do or did during the day, that was it. But then I was angry with you. I was mean to you. I was resentful. I thought you were living this amazing vacation life and I had to be the one working all the time. And then I remember, literally after the first or second marriage counseling time, I decided to let some of that go. I think I held on to quite a bit of it for a while because it's just time and learning, but I let some of that go right away and I remember you would you would literally say you're not mad. And I'm like, "No." And I learned how to be compassionate towards your journey. And that changed a lot mm-hmm. in our marriage. Mm-hmm. Holy crap. Yeah. <laughs> I just got chills. That makes so much sense. So yeah, and with that, tying it to the, like, the example that Will Smith gave, like, I was trying to, like, I quit, and I'm trying to build this thing that I don't know. Like, I, I had a lot of fear, I had a lot of anxiety, I had a lot of, like, it just, well, I'm jumping into, I'm jumping off a cliff, I, I'm trying to figure out how to build wings. And I was trying to thrive, I was trying to blossom, but I couldn't. And... When you made that shift and you started being more compassionate towards me, after the whole confusion period yeah. <laughs> subsided, when I was like, what are you talking about? I, and I thought you were testing me. But once that, like, I was like, okay, cool. This is awesome. I love this. I was able to thrive. Yeah. I was able to start making changes and start opening up and start dealing with what I had blocking me. So basically, I went from being a seed in a nutrient deficient soil to all of a sudden I'm a seed in a nutrient dense soil yeah and now I can start blossoming yeah and then when we moved out of the house I was able to 
we were in a new environment. Yeah. And that's when I really, like, my whole breakthrough, my whole transformation, like, I'm a different person today, and it happened when we changed environments with the same nutrient-dense relationship. The love, the compassion, the empathy, the respect, the adoration, like, you name it, we brought that with us into this new environment because we were like, we don't like this vase or this pot. Yeah. We don't like this pot. Let's move to a new pot. We're taking our soil, our flower seeds. Let's go. Yeah. I think another big thing that I realized too is that when we, you were advised that you shouldn't have an ego in a relationship. And I think you had taken that to a whole nother level because <laughs> you were literally bending over backwards for me. And my, my personality was I grew up with a dad and a brother who told me how it was constantly. Like, I was always in the face of, like, being questioned or doubted, so I was I had to be independent and stand up for myself. And you taking that on, that other side to our relationship made me feel like, wait, what the heck? Like, mm-hmm. why isn't he being honest and truthful and whatever? And so, like, talking about meeting fire with fire... I had to learn that when you finally made the switch and you started being your true self, because those were your untrue colors, doing everything that I wanted, and th- that was untrue colors that wasn't helping either of us grow. So when you started like just saying things that you felt and doing what you wanted and being on your journey, now I have to learn like sometimes if you're angry, because you never used to get mad at me or upset with me, and I, would, I fight back with anger, that's meeting fire with fire, and that's a bad thing. Like, I have to realize, okay, he's on a journey. He's feeling something. It's okay. And I have to sometimes just sit down and, like, let it be. Because you sometimes say it, too. You're like, just quit meeting fire with fire. Just yeah. let me be. And I'm like, okay. And that's, like, a shift that I have to learn. And I've been learning because that wasn't the case before. So it's just really interesting how we've completely transformed, but we've done it together mm-hmm. In such a cool way. Yeah. No, that's and that's it. Like, right? Like, I gave my heart to this person. Therefore, whatever that person is feeling is because of me. And when it comes to ego, how much more egotistical can you be to assume and put yourself in a position that everything that that person experiences, positive or negative, is because of you? Yeah. How important do you think you are? Right. Right? And that's not to say that you're not important, but how important do you think you are? And that's what it was, right? Like, if you would have a bad day at work and you'd come home and you'd be in this whatever attitude and you'd be irritated, I would take it personally. Mm -hmm. If I would get mad at something that had literally nothing to do with you, you would take it personally. And we were... You were meeting fire with fire. Now it's a, so much less, and we moved through it so much faster because, in reality, we don't enjoy being irritated with each other. Like, we don't enjoy fighting. So, we, and then uh, we also discovered this hack that if you're mad, just smile. Yeah. <laughs> the most annoying thing that it's we do. It's so annoying, but. <laughs> That's I, part of the research that I do. It just comes up and I'm like, crap, I have to do this. So that night you did something and I was like, what do you, and you just went. <laughs> I, I, think, I think it's just important to know that in a marriage, if like what we figured out, like, do we want to be with each other? Yes. Do we absolutely love each other? Yes. Do we drive each other crazy? Yes. But are we going to do anything in our power to make it work? Yes, because we want to make it work. The second we don't want to make it work, that's a different conversation. Mm -hmm. But until and like we want to make it work, we're making it work. Period. There's no ifs, ands, or buts about it. Like if it means hard conversations and hard work, you gotta do it because nothing in this life comes easy. No. And when you hit road bumps or what you perceive as roadblocks. If you're actually driving in a car and you get to a dead end, do you just turn your car off and stop? Or do you reverse and you find another way? That's life. 
You're going to hit roadblocks. You're going to hit dead ends. You're going to have to turn around. It's okay because your journey is not to just call it quits. That is a surefire way to, to regret your decisions. Unless you're in a bad relationship. Unless you're in a bad relationship. <laughs> but that's different, right? Yeah. It's, not, it's not, hey, this is difficult. I can't seem to make her happy. I can't seem to make him happy. When you, when you talk about abuse, verbal, physical, any whatever, kind. emotion, any kind, cut all their shoes up and, and bounce <laughs> instantly, right? Like, Shoot. that's there's no place for that. Right. But I'm saying, if you allow your own negative perception of marriage, that file cabinet, if you allow that, you just close that for a second, You'll be able to see that this person loves you and they're trying. And when you see that somebody loves you and they're trying, after all the crap that y'all have gone through, you admire them on a different level and you're going to say, whoa, okay, they're trying, that's all I need because maybe let me help them try differently. Yeah. Right? But if you leave that open, you're going to say, they don't care anyways. They don't, but that's a lie. It's a lie. And your, your heart knows that's a lie. We had points where you could have left. But you didn't because your heart knew that wouldn't be right. Your brain was saying, get out. This is not worth it. This ain't it. Like, yeah. this is not what you, this is not a marriage. You're not being treated properly. You got to do all. But your heart said otherwise. Your heart said, no. Close the cabinet for a minute. Yeah. And close your eyes and see with your heart. Yeah. And that shifted everything for us. So, last question for you. Okay. How does me versus me? How does me versus me apply to our marriage for you? Ooh, me versus me in relation to our marriage. Well, this episode is called Untrue Colors. So the true colors are within me. So it's important that I lead with my true colors. And in a marriage that is love and abundance and faith and all those incredible things not the fear and horrible things it's about love so if I lead with love it's easy that's awesome your turn for what? same question what was the question? I forgot <laughs> what is me versus me? how does it affect you in relation to marriage? Oh, um, that's a good question thank you for asking um <laughs> With us, it's remembering that I'm not, A, I'm not being held at gunpoint. A, I was not forced to be in this relationship. Or B, I'm not, I wasn't forced to be in this relationship. And what that means is that I chose to be here. And if I ask why did I choose to be here, it leads me back to love. So anytime anything gets difficult, there's this whole, there's this age old saying, nothing worth having comes easy. For us to be where we're at right now, it was not easy. But that makes me appreciate this so much more. So when we do have little moments where I get irritated or you get irritated and we're just like, whoa, whatever. We move through it so fast because literally, if I just stop and I look at you, I'm reminded of why I chose to be here why I don't let the nonsense and the difficulties and things like that trickle in and drive how I treat you. Because at the end of the day, there's this whole concept of ride or die. I think it goes both ways. You got to be willing to ride or die for me. I got to be willing to ride or die for you. And if life is going to be tough, life is going to be challenging, life is going to be full of obstacles, don't you want your best friend with you? And my answer is yes. Me too. So, with that, leave your comments. We would really, really love it if you guys could just take a quick minute and leave us a comment. Um, if you're listening on the podcast, please give us a rating and write us a review. It would mean the world to us. Please make sure you subscribe. Please subscribe, and we hope that you are able to take something away from this episode. And until next week, see you later.
Watch your mouth when I come around. I'ma shut it down. Got that sound that's gonna run the town. In and out the town. Ain't no way around.